That's a brand, though, that was created to be like that. As people are complaining that Ira is using one yard of clothes to sew, to sew, using one yard of material to, that's her brand, right? That's her brand. But it's not like she's trying to make, she's not over-sexualizing herself, but that's her brand. At that moment, she's still within that same space. As she gets, as she gets older, just watch that space. You're going to see that she's going to be evolving. So they, ha they have to build up on that. What should this person be known as? In the next three years, this person might not be known as whiskey. It might be known as Wizman. Is it going to be the same sound? Music is forever changing, right? So we need to always change with the music. When I open this person's Instagram, what kind of content do I want to be seeing? Is it new music? Is it me recording in the studio? Is, is, is it photo shoots? What, I, what type of videos do we want to be putting out? And then when we have interviews, what, I, what type of journalist? Because that's, again, that's another thing that people don't understand. As a brand, you know your brand. I wouldn't send you as a publicist to go and sit down and speak to a journalist that is not maybe music oriented or is not someone that would typically support new music. I won't send you to a political journalist because I'm looking for airtime for you. I wouldn't send you that. Now, if I, what kind of music do you make? So R&B. Now, imagine if you are in the genre of someone like a Thames. And your music is a bit slower. It's, it has a classical feel to it. If I'm packaging you, I'm not thinking about how to get you on. I'm not rushing to the, what's the word, to maybe like um, a beat FM in a hurry, especially if it has like a, a jazz feel. I'm rushing to inspiration FM, I'm rushing to classical FM, I'm rushing to smooth FM. I'm going to go and build a serious relationship with them because those are the people that will play your song three, four times a day. Because your sound fits into what their audience is made for, right? Now, it's not that I'm not going to put you on a beat FM, but if I have to put you on a beat FM, I have to take my time to listen. Listen to the different um, shows on beat FM and find out which show because every radio, every radio has like different programs curated for different audience. So I have to find the particular or show that is that sound. Because don't forget that the audience that you're making this music for, they all have their peculiar sounds. There's something we call media training. Every artist, a lot of artists, especially those that come from proper structures, like pop music record labels, I use Maven a lot because they have a good structure. There's a team for, there's, so when you see an IRA star inside Maven, there's a team for IRA star. It's not the same team managing Rema that is handling IRA star. It's not the same team managing Crayon that is managing IRA star. The, everybody has a team. So when we're talking about music PR, one of the first key themes you need to understand is the idea is, first of all, to cultivate a positive image for yourself. You know that thing that we always say on social media, social media, uh, social media never forgets. They'll go and pull up your tweet from five years ago. If you have a, if you have a nasty tweet, go and delete it though. Because the internet never forgets. How many, of you, how, many of, how many of you have been in a recording camp before? What happened during the recording camp? Sorry? So imagine when your career progresses. It's like back-to-back -back recording. And then somebody, an unknown face, will come and start typing English or something, insulting you on social media. How do you feel? So you have to also not be in, that, in those shoes because, again, like I said, the internet never forgets. So one of the first steps you need to start, you need to make in terms of working towards your PR is start cleaning up your images, start cleaning up your brand. So when you, if you have posts. There are posts that you can come back to five years down the line and laugh about. Maybe it's something where you were, you know when we were, you know those days when we were young, we used to write, we don't, we don't write full English. It's like, our like is like L, Y, K. And I'm thinking to myself like, now wow. So I, I wrote like this. Those things, those ones are fine because I mean, there's growth. But when you are insulting somebody's father that might come next, in the next three years and he's running a show, it might be the one that will change your life. So clean your images. That's the first thing you need to do, clean your images. 
Number two is how do you how do you want to be perceived? How do you want to see yourself? Do you want to see yourself as the youngest female producer right now? Give yourself a tagline sometimes. That tagline helps you because what that tagline does is that it makes you can be intentional towards working, your, working towards yourself. So when I started this year, I started this year as the key word I used for myself was being intentional about every single thing that I do. So most of the things that I've done this year, I didn't do it blindly. I was very intentional about the things that I did start building that, right? So what's your tagline? What do you want to be known as? The next big thing or the next person. You know when people say, I want to win the Grammy. I'm sorry. I mean, yes, it might look funny, but you can walk towards it. What's stopping you? I mean, now that, especially now that we have Afrobeats that is taking over the global space, everybody wants to have an Afrobeat sound to it. What's stopping you? But, you know, in cleaning your image, have a tagline. Start, what, what, how do you want to be seen? How do you want to be seen? That's one of the first things you should have, right? Um, when you're putting out, what, what are the type of things? What's your brand name? Is your brand name that that will be very memorable? You know, for a very long time, I'm sure you, we can also testify, we all, all had that issue where we used to mix Joe Boy and Fire Boy together. I don't know if you had the same issue. I had the same issue. Now, Fire Boy had an issue. The issue Fire Boy had was the first set of photos released to the public, we couldn't see his face. His dreads kept covering his face. And that's a branding problem. So we didn't know who, who Fire Boy was because his hair kept covering his face. So, in refining your brand, you're thinking about your photo shoots. What type of image do you want to be? What, what type of image do you want out there? Your face needs to register. Your face needs to register. There has to be like a PR photo. Obviously, as a brand, you need to all have a headshot first. You need to have a headshot. And then there has to be like a collection of photos that you, that you have for your upcoming projects. Now, in those pictures, PR is going to come into, what are you wearing? Is that how you want to be identified moving forward? Your brand signature, what's your brand name? Do you have a unique way of writing your name? Have you seen that Thames has a way of writing her name? Tiwa has a way of writing her name. How do you want to write your name? Rama has a way of writing his name. So all these things you're doing is, building your brand and gradually getting to that point. You need to have a brand signature. So when you get to that, when, when you're dropping music, do you have like a press release? Are you writing a, are you putting out a press release? How are you connecting with the, necessary, with the, with the top music um, platforms? Now, I want to believe that most of you have been in the music industry for at least eight, more than two years. So if I pick you randomly, can you tell me the top music platforms that we have in Nigeria right now? Auntie, what's your name? Tamashi. 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 Okay. What's the? Give me one music platform. Hmm? A, music platform. a music blog. A top Nigerian music blog. You see where the issue is? Give me one. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Fantastic. Not just okay is great, right? But you see the issue, which is where you need to understand music PR. Not just okay was big years ago. Right now, you have the turntable charts. You have the 49 streets. Do you get? These people are focusing on artists like yourself, young emerging artists. You have Native Magazine. Native Magazine has something they call under where they are featuring emerging artists. They like provide spotlights. Not just okay, it's not bad, right? But you see what I'm talking about? Evolving with the, you have to. There's 49th Street, there's Stone Table Chats, you know, there's, there are a couple of, we talk sound, fantastic. That's, it's your job to know. Because when you can't afford, remember what the Namibian artist said yesterday, if you cannot afford to have 
the right people on your team. It's your job to know everything. If you guys are book readers, I would advise you to, um, there's this um, 50 cents book. I don't know if you've heard of it. Get Rich or Die. Is it Get Rich? Uh, read that book. That book, you know what 50 Cent talks about in that book? He talks about how when he wasn't getting attention from his record label, every day he would still go to their offices. And each week he would spend time in the different departments. Today he's with the marketing guys, tomorrow he's with this. So what that did for him was that he was able to learn from everybody. So by the time he started pushing out himself, pushing out his, getting his music out there, he knew a bit of everything. So he was making money and he could hire the right people. It's your job to know a bit of everything so that when your brand is portrayed in a way you do not like, you shut it down. Your press releases, you want to have a certain tone. You want to see yourself on certain blogs. You want to be able to invite, you need to work, you want to work with an A and R who you've had is so fantastic because you need to make sure that your, sign is, your sound is refined enough. You want your social media page to have a certain type of feel. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys ever came across when there was, a, there was this RM rapper, he used to be known as Bizo, no, Busy or so. He used to have this thing called New Music Fridays. So every Friday he would drop a song. It became his thing. Whether the song blew or whether the song no blew, every Friday he was dropping songs. But guess what? People started paying attention, started keying into that. People started, you know, I'm not saying you should drop songs every Monday or every Friday, but that became his thing. So every Friday, people were expecting music from him. And the fact that he would take his time, work with a graphics artist, have the best cover art, was to tell you that there was work going on behind the scenes. So it's not, your outlook is very important when it comes to music PR. Because if I start telling people about you, the first thing they'll say is, what's, what's her Instagram handle? And they go on your Insta Instagram handle, we have, you have 150 posts. And out of your 150 posts, 20 posts only have your music. You jump and pass. Or even the one that has your songs or the other posts there do not define you all over the place. Copy's trademark is pink. So everything about her is pink. She's wearing purple, she's wearing purple with pink. I mean, but that's how you recognize her. So that's what you have to start building on. How do you want to be perceived out there? How do you want the music journalists to know you? How do you want your brand to be taken? What kind of compelling story are you telling about your brand? It's not everybody that will do the grass to grace thing, right? But there has to be a unique way in how you want, your, how you want to tell your story, your brand story. These are the things you need to look at. Right now, like Elbly said, everything is on social media. Everything is on social media. So what are you doing? It's not everyone that's gonna have a TikTok challenge. But you still need to leverage on all these platforms to get your music out there. You know, how are we pushing? How am I, how am I taking advantage of social media? If I'm a student, can I get my classmates to dance to my song and put it on TikTok? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Use social media to the best of your knowledge. So that even if tomorrow a big producer sees you and they want to work with you, they see that at least this person has been putting in the work. So now nobody's coming to dull your shine. Right? You have the media coverage. When you're doing this thing consistently, I can tell you, a lot of these music, music journalists, I know these guys sit down quietly on their phone and they're looking. Three days ago, I got a message from one of them saying he wants to work with a lot of female artists in the coming year. So he's looking out for a lot of them. And I'm sitting down and I'm sending him different names. And he's coming back, okay, this one is fantastic. You get her, you get her email. Oh, this one, she needs A and R, but I wouldn't mind working with her. Oh, this one, we need to polish her. Oh, this one, no follow. They're looking out for you. But if you're not coming correct with the little that you have right now, this industry is very expensive. Very expensive. We've, we've spent 40 million on a song before. A song, No Blue. That's the irony of the industry. But what, what keeps you is consistency. Consistency and remaining in your brand. Just that same thing you're doing. Keep at it. But remain in that brand. If you need to rebrand, why are you rebranding? Let it be clear. 
why you're rebranding so that when people are tracing your story that's why we have just digital footprint is key when people are tracing your story they're like oh she used to be known as this but the reason why she changed is because you know i think this industry or that's this one favored her more and when you can hire a publicist you hire a publicist you know when you can hire a publicist you hire a publicist but when you're dropping new music what's stopping you find have you find a new journal find music journalists how many music journalists do you know I'm looking at you guys. How many do you know? So you see, you, you see, you see that you guys haven't even scratched the surface. You see, people send in. People, I, I know, I know an artist. She sends hundred emails a day to whoever is going to pick her song. She send an email. I'm trying. I'm introducing myself. My name is this, this, this. He, this is my social media page. She's like, she's so confident. And she just told herself, you know what, if Nigerians are not going to pay attention to me, let me send it to the, let me find journalists in Ghana, let me find journalists. And guess what? She started getting more airplay in Ghana. Tanzania, Tanzania started playing her song. She started getting invited. But she did the work. She didn't have the money. She couldn't afford anybody. All she did was send me a message. Oh, Ada, please, can you guide me on how to send this email and what to do? How do I package it in such a way that... I'm not looked down on. I said, well, tidy your social media because when you send that image, they're going back to your social media to go and look for you. What do you, know, what do you usually tweet? Are you one of those people that you're steady on social media looking for who to throw or begging for money? These guys will slam you. Tidy your social media. What type of images are you putting out on your social media page? Give us short clips of this song. Tell us a story. You guys are recording in the studio. How many of you are taking pictures and videos? So how do people know what you're doing? How do people know that you're, you're taking your career serious? When you've not shown them the... So when the song is out, well, how do you tell your story? That they came to you in your house and they recorded. You tell a story. Let people see the journey. Let them know that, oh, you actually came out for this. I mean, you, you could have been doing other things now, but you're here. Let them tell that story. Let your, let, your, let your page tell your story of your journey as an artist, how you started. You've seen the likes of them, Don Jazz. You see how Don Jazz is always telling you how he's discovering his people on social media. Not because they were always in his DM, but even if they were in the DM, he still went to their page and he was looking and like, okay, this person has been consistent. Are you sending, are you consulting these guys and these young people? Because a lot of the guys in the executive arm of the music industry now are young people like us. So are you consulting them and saying, oh, what do you think I should do about my sound? So understand the business, not just the show. Is the reason it's called show business, right? A lot of you understand only the show. You don't understand the business. Understand the business. When you understand the business, that will take you far. Right? So let's run through. Tidying your image. Having a compelling story. How do you want to be perceived? What's your brand name? What type of language? So your, how do you want to be perceived includes a lot of things, right? So from your language, from your mute to your music style, to the, your general outlook as a person. What else? What kind of compelling story are you telling about? Yeah. Timeline, right? Mm -hmm. Your tagline. So even then with your music, how often are you dropping? Consistency is key, right? So you might not always have money to drop music, but just keep dropping, just keep dropping. One day, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit. Don't drop one now and then next year you're dropping. So every year, drop, no. So even if it's like every three months, drop a song. Drop a song. Read. Best way to grow in this industry is read. Consist, just constantly read. Why am I saying you should read? Read up on um, the best ways you want your music. So for instance, at Tune we have different packages for different artists. Some packages come with social media, some do not come with social media. Now, some people will say they don't want the social media, but then some people will say they want the social media. What can the social media do? How, how else can I do? Because the mistake people make is, I mean, you put your song on streaming platforms, you think that the streaming platform is supposed to do your PR for you, and you have relaxed. It doesn't work now. How many people am I introducing to my music every day? 30 December is coming. 
if we have songs here, how many shows am I trying to get on to even be an opening act? And then if I'm trying to get on these shows and I'm telling them, look at me now, look at my page, or look at my music, and, my, and, and, and it's not tidy, then what happens? If you can't communicate, if you can't speak your language, are there people in the industry that you have access to that you can tell them, please, I know that I, don't, I might not be able to pay you, but can you please give me some time and help me tidy this? It's not everybody that likes money. I mean, we all like money. Nigeria is hard, but we're not living for the money. There are people that will genuinely help you once they see that you're striving to, to, to push, right? So even when down to the music, when your music is out, before your music is even out, are you pitching? Are you pitching to have it on new releases, on playlisting? Playlisting is key because, again, because of the way the Nigerian music structure is, there are certain things that you might not be able to um, manage in terms of how far your music. Someone mentioned Niger Loaded. Niger Loaded is a culprit in a lot of things. People are dropping songs and they are just uploading somebody's song. How do you want to make money from your, for, from your streaming? If somebody can easily go on and download it and just download your song like that. Right? So these are things that, and then because I'm, as, when, I'm, when I'm saying read, read, because a bit, again, PR is a mixture of law, psychology, it's a, lot, it's a mixture of a lot of things. So at every point, you need to understand why if your audience are changing and why they are changing. Are they moving to a different or they, are prefer, they prefer a different sound? Social media. Um, Stephanie yesterday was talking about digital marketing. It's something that is very critical. I'm not sure, I don't know whether she mentioned there, but even with your social media pages, you need to check your d analytics. When do you have the most, when you post a picture, when do you have the most likes? When do you have the most audience? Check your analytics, you see it is there. Can I hold my own ground? If I ca can I hold my own down? If I can't hold my own down, please let's suspend anything media interview for now till I'm sure I'm confident enough not to fool myself. That's why you see their media training. People are, everybody's applauding Rema. Rema has been trained to know the right things to say, the right way to present himself. That's media training. They've probably invited three or four media personalities to the Maven headquarters, and they've asked them to do mock interviews for them to be able to practice. So they know how to deal with the hard questions and how to deal with it. That's why they don't have scandals. Those guys will train you from artist development. Thank you for even reminding me. I think one of the best things you can do, even as an artist, especially a newbie, is to build a, a, a database, build a contact list, take advantage of that, and, 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 and build like an, and start having a newsletter. One of the best ways that Adekunle Go built his fan base was through his newsletters. He would write these newsletters in as if he's talking to you. He will make it so personal. You will know his journey before it's even out to the general public because you signed on early. So it's, it's, it's fantastic. Now, when you want to send out new music, right, there are certain journalists that you have to personalize it. Like I said, people send 100 emails a day. We journalists send to them personalized. Don't send them the generic ones. Personalize and send to them. But when you want to keep your people involved or you want to keep them abreast of what is happening in your life, yes, the, the, uh, of what's happening in your career. Like, for instance, you guys have done, you've, you've, your, your, the weekend is ending, what, tomorrow morning? If you had a newsletter, you tell people what you were up to this weekend. From the moment, oh, that you, 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 you were selected for Her Sound 2023, you arrived at so-and-so -so time. It was a privilege to meet other female creatives. You didn't know that there was this much female creatives. You took pictures with these people. You met a producer that you're looking forward to working with her, in her with, for your next song. You recorded this. You, you spoke to top music. Connect. When you make it your thing, I'll be telling my friends about you. My friends will be signing up. They're not waiting for me to start sending them screen grab. So newsletters are a thing, a very big thing. If you can't write very well, please, chat GPT is there to your rescue. That's why, we, that's why technology is evolving. Take advantage of these things. If you're not even sure what chat GPT is sending, like I said, start connecting. Start connecting with people. I'm sure... You know, as time goes, Cheche can also drop some templates 
for, for, for you guys to use in these things that you can start tapping into, right? There's a template for everything. There's always a template for everything. And then again, Google is your friend. We're not moving around with smartphones as fashion accessories. There's so much you can find on the internet. Um, I hope that answers your question.